You also offered the use of your website uh, for Assange or your servers or anything else you can do to, uh, to keep WikiLeaks alive. What's the premise? The premise is that we, uh, um, we really owe a, a debt uh, to Mr. Assange and to WikiLeaks for turning on a big spotlight on those people. An instrument like WikiLeaks is vital for a free and open society to exist. And for, for me, I think anybody who supports WikiLeaks, they're, they're committing an act of patriotism because it, it guarantees, I think, I hope, that uh, we have a better shot uh, next time uh, the bad guys try to pull one off on us. And that's why I'm a huge supporter of what WikiLeaks is doing. Think about it. The terrorists of September 11th plotted in Hamburg and trained in Kandahar and Karachi before killing thousands from all over the globe on American soil. Poorly secured nuclear material in the former Soviet Union or secrets from a scientist in Pakistan could help build a bomb that detonates in Paris. The poppies in Afghanistan come to Berlin in the form of heroin. This is the moment when we must defeat terror and dry up the well of extremism that supports it. This threat is real and we cannot shrink from our responsibility to combat it. This is the moment when we must renew the goal of a world without nuclear weapons. It is time to secure all loose nuclear materials, to stop the spread of nuclear weapons, and to reduce the arsenals from another era. This is the moment to begin the work of seeking the peace of a world without nuclear weapons. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about WikiLeaks. Disinformation is defined as misinformation that is deliberately disseminated in order to influence or confuse rivals. It is used by governments to mislead and brainwash the citizen populations, instigate wars and blackmail foreign regimes. It is the ultimate instrument of the media. The most effective disinformation is that which is comprised of falsehood as well as facts. WikiLeaks, founded by Julian Assange, fits this description perfectly, right down to the letter. Seemingly overnight, it has become one of the biggest whistleblowing agencies in modern history. In reality though, it is one of the biggest disinformation projects in modern history and it may be the most dangerous because it is masquerading as an organization of truth. The information released by WikiLeaks isn't new. It's not groundbreaking, it doesn't hurt the US as much as people think. It's fractional really, and it is overloaded with as much propaganda as the day-to-day -day Zionist media is. This propaganda is benefiting someone, and that someone is the illegal usurping entity of Israel. Even the Israeli government itself thinks so. The first major leak released earlier this year by Assange was about occupied Afghanistan in the form of more than 92,000 documents. These documents included secret files about civilian killings by the US and NATO along with boogeyman stories about the long dead Osama bin Laden, garbage regarding the Taliban acquiring ground to air missiles and plenty of lies about Pakistan's intelligence agency the ISI. There wasn't a single document about the Israeli training of the Taliban, the massive drug profiteering by the Mossad, the CIA and the US puppet Hamid Karzai and his brother. Karzai's connections to UNICAL and Zionist war criminal Henry Kissinger, the clandestine Israeli business operation set up to take control of the oil fields in neighboring Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, or the Russian Jewish mafia fully protected by the Zionist entity selling guns to US-backed Afghan warlords. Why weren't any of these massively important critically damning events and operations mentioned? Because by doing so, it would incriminate the already internationally condemned Zionist regime. Journalists, bloggers and activists from occupied Afghanistan and abroad have been reporting on the vast civilian casualties in Afghanistan since US intervention began more than 30 years ago. WikiLeaks revealed nothing that wasn't already known. However, it did reinforce Zionist propaganda regarding the illegal war on terror. The next major leak by Assange's organization, which has gained more notoriety than the previous leak, was about occupied Iraq in the form of nearly 400,000 documents. 
Like the occupied Afghanistan disinformation, it included secret files about mass civilian killings by US forces, torture by war criminal Nuri al-Maliki and his forces, which according to WikiLeaks, US military officials attempted to halt US government failings in reprimanding Blackwater XC for committing murder, and brutal executions by the American and British occupiers, mixed with more tripe about fictitious Al-Qaeda, nonsense about Iran training militant Iraqi militias and Iranian drones flying over Iraq, Iran smuggling guns, munitions and explosives into Iraq, ridiculous accusations of the Lebanese resistance movement Hezbollah training Iraqis in the art of kidnapping, slanderous attacks on Iran's Revolutionary Guard, and other absurd assertions about the Islamic Republic involved in the murder of innocent Iraqis. The WikiLeaks Iraq war logs also revealed civilian casualties numbered at 66,081. The logs also revealed that Iraqi WMDs actually did exist as US soldiers found chemical weapons labs, terrorist toxin specialists and chemical weapons caches. There was nothing secret about American and British forces murdering, torturing and raping innocents in occupied Iraq. Like Afghanistan, Iraqi and international journalists, bloggers and activists have been reporting the murder of civilians in Iraq since the beginning of the illegal occupation with much more effectiveness than WikiLeaks. The US military did not attempt to halt the puppet al-Maliki's torture of unlawfully imprisoned Iraqis. They partook in it. They led the way after they signed off on it. They were the primary perpetrators. Secret prisons are still operating at this very moment where US forces barbarously torture innocent Iraqis. The US hired Blackwater's contractors to instill fear and execute terrorism against the people of Iraq. Of course it didn't reprimand them. Eric Prince's private army of terror was only doing what it was told to by the US government. The concept of Hezbollah training foreign militias to meddle in state affairs is absolute lunacy. Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah himself has stated on numerous occasions that if Hezbollah wanted to overthrow the Lebanese government, they would have done so already. Their objectives, as evidenced by their actions, are to protect the Lebanese people, provide them with security, and uphold their dignity. Hezbollah hasn't undermined its own government. It is asinine to think it would undermine the government of another nation. The propaganda targeting Iran is pathetic. There are enough guns in Iraq thanks to American support of Saddam Hussein to last lifetimes. There was no need for Iran to provide weapons to Iraqi militias through smuggling. The only drones that were flying in Iraq's skies belonged to the repulsive Zionist entity, not Iran. The other accusations sound like concoctions dug up from the dungeons of Zionist think tanks and lobby organizations celebrating for the destruction of the Islamic Republic, not the work of whistleblowers attempting to expose corruption and disseminate truth. These accusations further the Zionist case for striking Iran militarily. These accusations are promoting more war, not peace. WikiLeaks must not have gotten the memo about civilian casualties in occupied Iraq. They are nowhere near 66,081. They have eclipsed the 1.5 million mark. Anything less than this, especially a number as low as the one presented by WikiLeaks, is classic misreporting aimed at protecting the United States government and its collaborators. That is an insult to the 5 million Iraqi orphans and the 5 million Iraqi refugees. It is a slap in the face to the dead Iraqis whose names will never be known because they were incinerated by US and Israeli weaponry. And the notion that US soldiers found WMDs in Iraq after the Iraq has WMDs myth has been debunked as Zionist design propaganda over and over again is frankly infuriating. The only WMDs that exist in Iraq are the Mark 77, white phosphorus and thousands of tons of depleted uranium used in Basra, Baghdad and Fallujah by the terrorist army of the US and strategically placed Mossad agents of Israel. Where are the leaks on the 55 Zionist companies profiting from Iraqi blood being spilled? Where are the leaks on Iraq's artifacts being stolen by Zionist agents? Where are the leaks on hundreds of Mossad agents operating in Mosul? Where are the leaks on the Mossad bomb-making facility in Kirkuk? Where are the leaks on the Mossad murderers stationed in several villages around the devastated area of Fallujah? Where are the leaks on the depleted uranium-tipped IEDs of Zionist-owned Zapata engineering that have massacred thousands in Najaf, Karbala and Tarafar, just to name a few? Where are the leaks on the Israeli arms dealers supplying weapons to CIA-trained death squads? Where are the leaks on Zionist war criminal Paul Wolfowitz importing Shenbet torture experts to train the US military? 
where the leaks on Mossad conducting interrogations and torture in Iraqi jails, including Abu Ghraib, where the leaks that will actually tie the illegal war, which was exclusively designed by Zionists, to Israel. They don't exist because WikiLeaks isn't concerned with uncovering the truth regarding the real criminals. They are concerned with leading the public away from the truth to keep them under control. It's Co Intel Pro all over again. The target of WikiLeaks' first release was the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The objectives of the operation were to give credibility to war criminal Obama's illegal drone strikes that have murdered over 1,000 civilians, raise the possibility of a future overt occupation, and cover up the meddling of Israel in occupied Afghanistan. It is vital to note that the destabilization of Pakistan has been the Zionist objective since the declaration of al nakba architect David Ben-Gurion. They want to denuclearize Pakistan. The target of WikiLeaks' second release was the Islamic Republic of Iran. The objective of this operation was to slander two of the very few entities on earth resisting Israel, Hezbollah and Iran, as well as cover up the Zionist fingerprints all over the mutilation of Iraq. The IAEA has already inadvertently foiled the Zionist plan to attack Iran based on the nuclear premise, confirming that the Iranian nuclear program is peaceful in nature and has nothing to do with weaponization. The Zionist Hasbara experts needed to try something new through WikiLeaks. The accusations of the Zionist Bush administration against Iran have resurfaced under the guise of whistleblowing. It's a sham. The Saudis, the Egyptians and the Jordanians are not nearly as confident as the Iranians and Hezbollah are about the future. Listen to how Ahmadinejad speaks. Listen to Nasrallah. This air, this aura of self-assurance, time is on our side. A final note needs to be made about Julian Assange, the man who has been praised as a freedom fighter, a revolutionary and a friend of the oppressed people. In a recent interview he stated, I'm constantly annoyed that people are distracted by false conspiracies such as 9-11, when all around we provide evidence of real conspiracies for war or mass financial fraud. It's shameful that Assange is annoyed by those seeking truth regarding the reason 1.5 million innocents are dead in occupied Iraq, 1.2 million innocents are dead in occupied Afghanistan, and thousands of more innocent men, women and children are dead in occupied Palestine, Lebanon, Pakistan, Yemen and Somalia. 9-11 is anything but a false conspiracy. There is overwhelming evidence that American and Israeli officials did not just have foreknowledge of the event, but planned the attack and carried it out. It was a Mossad CIA false flag used to protect the Zionist entity from any future military threat and expand the parasitic hegemony of the US and the illegitimate Tel Aviv regime throughout the world via the Zionist inspired war on terror. Someone insulting the seekers of 9-11 truth, slandering the righteous movement of Hezbollah, spreading propaganda about Iran which adds to the demonization campaign levied against the Islamic Republic by the Zionist lobby and the Zionist media and deliberately leaving out Israeli crimes in occupied Afghanistan and Iraq is no freedom fighter. Such a person is a liar and a propagandist. WikiLeaks' most recent leak about occupied Iraq was delivered to several mainstream news outlets including Al Jazeera, the Zionist New York Times, Der Spiegel of Germany, which has smeared Hezbollah in the past by despicably accusing the resistance of selling narcotics, Zionist-controlled Le Monde of France, which has also smeared Hezbollah recently, and The Guardian of the UK in packages as if it was some sort of gift for a holiday. This isn't a leak. This isn't an expose. This is a press release. This is a media spectacle. This is a circus to cover up real crimes. Those interested in seeing a real leak, in addition to real courage, should read the story of Mordechai Wanunu, who blew the whistle on Israel's nuclear program and has spent the last 26 years in and out of Israel's inhumane prisons, including 18 years consecutively, with 11 of those years in solitary confinement. Iraq was annihilated for the Zionist regime, as was Afghanistan. When discussing the destruction of these nations and the murder of millions of their people, it is integral to the understanding of the crimes committed to discuss the Israeli role in these crimes. Any person or institution failing to do so is ignorant, a coward or a collaborationist.
None of these persons have any place in the movement to restore the occupied lands to the indigenous people and bring the tormentors to justice. By supporting WikiLeaks, you're not fighting the occupier, you're not honoring the martyrs, you're not combating imperialism, and you're not striking back at the oppressor. You're supporting Israel and the cover-up of the activities of its criminal network. WikiLeaks is Zionist poison. Wake up!